What's going on guys? You're watching the Shield Bearer of Faith. Thank you for being here. So I have officially arrived back from the edge of the world. And I'm uh, very happy to be back. I saw some brothers and sisters in Christ that I haven't seen in a handful of months. I didn't realize that I hadn't seen most of them in about four months. And uh, that's between being overseas and training trips here before I left. And we took about a week visiting family in Virginia once we got back. So it's been all these, you know, different time frames. It's really good to be back. And, <clears throat> you know, I feel like I've learned a lot from the entire experience. All of life is a training. Years ago now, I had a dream that some of y'all have been around long enough to know about, but without me recapping and boring you with the whole dream again, something I think about frequently that's from that dream is God told me in the dream at the very end of it, a very specific thing in reference to training. And since then, training has been pretty much my life, or at least a good portion of it. It's been a significant drive and motivator for me. And the specific wording at the end of that training uh, was I asked this guy who I think was like a Christ-like uh, reference in the dream. I asked him, when's the next training? Because he had just taught me a lot of things in the dream. I don't even remember what he taught me, but I knew that he had taught me a lot of things. I said, when's the next training? He said, I'll let you know. And then I woke up. I've had that happen to me a lot in the last few years, but even more close to now in time frame, the last few months. When's the next training? All of life is a training for something. The question is what? What's the next thing, Lord? Not because I'm bored with the current thing, but what's the next thing you want me to do? There's always something else. We're not dead yet. And if all of life is a training, then all of life is essentially a preparation for his will, for his missions, for his works, <clears throat> to serve people in his son's name. There's a lot of responsibility that comes with that, I'm finding, where <clears throat> I have to adjust on occasion how I naturally behave, or how my natural state of being or whatever is, I have to adjust that sometimes because of conviction or because of a rebuke from a brother in Christ. Because sometimes my way is not his way. And so trying to decipher what is the difference between those two, to be honest with you, is sometimes difficult and sometimes very clear. So you have to constantly be asking and seeking and praying and reading. And I'm not very good at the reading part, especially I don't like to read, so seeking him and his word, I'm not always very good at. But nonetheless, he's always teaching me things. And I think I got to learn a lot from being in Ukraine. I got to learn a lot from my family being there with me as well. How to function for a fairly lengthy term on a mission in a less than ideal environment with very minimal resources in a lot of ways. My training resources going from refuge training to training people in Ukraine were very minimal, very minimal. You know, we burn through so many things here in the U.S. We take so many things for granted that some other places, some other people in the world would almost just give their left arm to have. So it's good to get perspective sometimes on just how blessed you are. So I got familiar with training people with fairly minimal materials, very minimal staffing through a language barrier, which meant that every word I said had to be translated, right? So if I'm teaching, let's say an hour, that means I'm actually only teaching about 30 minutes because every single thing that I'm trying to get across to the students has to be interpreted, which takes almost equal time some cases longer, some cases less, but about equal time to how long it takes me. So it slows down the whole process. And yet, because the Lord is in it, it was successful for a time. Everything has a duration. 
every mission has an expiration date. There's always a time to go home, refit, and then go somewhere else. Or the last mission might be training for the next mission. I've been seeing that. After my wife and kids and I had been in Kentucky after the tornado during the second week I was there, that was the first family mission that we did together. Things that we learned during that, we did absolutely use in Ukraine. Now, two and a half, almost three months of us doing mission things in Ukraine together, I'm confident those experiences will be used. All life is a training. But it does make me ask, training for what? And so I'm looking for what God's next piece from my life, my family's life is. And I don't know fully yet, but I have suspicions that I can't tell you about yet. And I guess we'll see. A friend of mine, one of you guys, he uh, messaged me here on Patreon and was talking about, I just read it a few minutes ago, was talking about a video he saw of, I think it was like a tanker crew. I've probably seen pieces of the video where they, they hit mines in a minefield. They're getting beat up, shot up, blown up. And this guy ends up trying to save a comrade, puts a tourniquet on him. And the friend of mine on here, he said, you know, I don't think that man lived. I don't know that that's one of my students or not, but of the approximately 500 soldiers, not including teenagers or random people, about the 500 soldiers I trained, if you're not careful, it will weigh on you some when you know some of them are dead. And if you're not careful, you'll start to forget your own teachings that you tell people about. It's not up to you or me when someone dies. It's up to you to do something. Well, I've been trying to do something, but yet, if you're not careful, you'll still feel some weight because it can almost feel like you failed them. I told y'all, the last class I taught was the worst one I think I've ever taught. A lot of spiritual warfare there. They did not hear us. And then a bunch of them died within the first week. You know, guys, it's not my fault. But I do wish they had listened a little more. I do wish that they had heard about Christ a little more. But my hope still remains. And this is kind of the direction that I commented back to the friend of mine. My hope is that maybe one person heard us. Maybe one. And maybe that one person is still alive. Maybe that one person knows Christ, even if it's just a beginning relationship. Maybe that one person will go on to save hundreds. We never know. But nonetheless, my team and I went and did what the Lord intended for us to do for the time that he intended us to be there. I believe that. No matter how it ended up, it was because it was the right time. <clears throat> I've never felt so driven to do something in my life. Well, I say that. When I was applying to be a police officer, I was pretty driven about that. I can look back now and see more of why the Lord has been using that. He was using it when I was still an officer. He was actively involved. He's been using it more and more, the experiences that I had as a cop. I'm sure he's going to use the experiences I had in Ukraine in ways that I can't imagine. Because I sure never thought that the people that I rendered aid to as a cop, I never thought that would you know, be anything more than a cool story or the right thing to do. I never dreamed that I would be sharing those testimonies in a war zone with people that are defending their country. Again, no matter what we think of the war, that is what the soldiers that are on the ground are doing. I never dreamed that I'd be able to share testimony about my nephew who a lot of y'all have heard about in class. I never dreamed I'd be able to share that testimony across the world, but I have. So if God can do that, 
what else can he do? Gets me curious, gets me interested and excited. But it also comes with the unknown fear, you know? That uncertainty you feel just before you step off the ledge. Sometimes I have to remind myself, he hasn't let me down yet, and he's not going to. But we still feel it, don't we? And here and in here, that uncertainty comes with risks. Nothing's guaranteed. And so as I'm looking to what the next steps from my life are, it's not quite as clear. I think it's going to require me to do things that I'm not comfortable with. Things that I'm not familiar with. Well, he's been doing that <laughs> pretty consistently. And yet he's never vacant. He's never absent. He's always right there with me. I'll tell you all more about it later. When I can. I don't have answers for you yet. I have suspicions. Got some conversations I have to go have with other people. And I think I'll get more clarity in the next few days about what the next steps I've got to take are. I'm confident that there's always another training. Plenty of people out there needing to hear about him in a way that makes sense, needing to hear about ways to delay death and hopefully save lives. Plenty of people all across the world. Somebody's got to go. I guess we'll see what that looks like. Had a great visit with family. I know I haven't done many videos in the last week. It was nice. Getting to visit family in Virginia was really good. It's not been easy on extended family, the things that I have felt the pull to go do. It's not easy for friends to understand why you would take your wife and kids, little kids, to Ukraine. It's definitely not easy for grandparents. But it's really cool how God works because even through the struggle that had to be there for my parents and my mother-in-law, even through that, There were moments where I think even they probably said, you know what, they're doing the right thing because they could see Christ working in my kids. Like when we're packing food bags and the kids are praying with people, that's priceless, man. You can't buy that. And hopefully they'll remember it or they'll be shaped by it forever. I've been hearing from a lot of people, changing gears a little bit, been hearing from a lot of people about purpose issues. By a lot, I mean a lot. Even since I got back, just today. People that are struggling with what their reason to exist is. And I think most of us would agree to serve the Lord. Cool, we can start there. But then after that, what does it even look like? How do you serve the Lord? What does it look like? As people struggle with it, it can weigh on them and it can change their behavior, it can make them irritated or angry because they're just not sure what direction to go. Left, right, straight, what do you want? God, what do you want? And then the whole time he's probably telling them they just don't hear it because we're filling our heads with so much noise. Sometimes we just need to step away and listen. You're probably feeling it. The thing you probably have to go do is probably the thing you don't want to do. The conversation you probably need to have is probably the one you're not having place that you're supposed to go and spend your time is probably the place you don't want to.
The thing you're supposed to be doing to serve the Lord is probably the thing you don't want to do. Friends of mine that are still in Ukraine, they are at least one of them struggling with purpose. What's his reason to be there? Not because there's not some things he could do, but there's a specific thing he feels led to do, and he's not being able to. He feels led to go and help the injured. You'd think that'd be easy, right? You'd think that, especially with his skill set, he's you know, from a medical background, you'd think it would be easy to just go jump in and start helping people. There's plenty of wounded. It's not. There's all these hoops you got to jump through. And so what I told him was, definitely pray on it. But maybe that's God's way of telling you that your time there is done. Maybe not, but maybe it is. Maybe your time is somewhere else. Maybe you're being told, cool, you did a good job, good and faithful servant. That's done now. There's a time for everything, and there's an ending for everything. Maybe now you're being told to go somewhere else. What's that look like for you? It probably applies somehow. I know it does for me. I've been feeling it. Conversation I got to have tomorrow that is in this direction. I'm looking forward to it, actually, because I want clarity. I know when I was deciding whether or not to go to Ukraine, I felt so much pressure and so much internal turbulence and so much uh, uncertainty until I just pulled the trigger on it and decided. Once my wife and I bought that first plane ticket to go in February, I wasn't amped up anymore. I wasn't feeling compressed or nervous anymore. I felt good, I felt at peace. And that's a, an indicator. When God's involved, guys, you're probably gonna feel peace. You know, I can honestly tell you, not because I'm a brave guy, but I can honestly tell you I was never afraid in Ukraine. And I went to some areas where there was risks. I had this one place I went to, Slavyansk, which is down near Bakhmut, actually. Uh, me and a friend of mine, we delivered Bibles and some clothing there. There was somebody in a window filming us as we dropped off some clothing and Bibles. And... Uh, the next day, if you're on my Patreon, the next day I posted photos because there was two rockets shot. Now, I don't know if this was because of us, but two rockets were shot. One of them impacted. We felt it when it, when it hit less than a mile away, and the other one impacted, I don't know, a couple miles away. The interesting thing was where those two hit or right near it, we were at both places within you know, a more or less distance the night before. So it makes you start asking questions. Were they aimed at me? Or were they just aimed over in this area? Because there's soldiers there for sure. So it could have been aimed at anybody, right? It does make you ask. And then we actually we looked at each other that morning when we heard and felt the impacts. And we're like, wow, that was close. We didn't know till later how close. We said, yeah, that was close. And uh, I told him, I was like, you know, honestly, I'm feeling pretty good about it. Inaccurate fire is not a huge deal. A little while later, a couple hours later, we get sent a picture of the crater that's full of water and told how close it was. And uh, I told him, I was like, this is actually encouraging to me. God's got it, man. He's watching out for us. But if it was our day, what a way to go. Delivering Bibles on some distant land to a lot of guys that don't know Jesus. I could think of many worse ways to go. So I felt very peaceful about it. It didn't make me fearful. It didn't him either. He felt at peace too. It's like, oh yeah. It's like we're protected. I trained at places that were dangerous. 
Not the most dangerous, don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to convince you of anything that wasn't true. But I trained at a place in Kyrgyzstan before the dam was attacked that's now underwater. <laughs> Kyrgyzstan was a, a battlefront that was only separated by a river. And uh, the Russians were on one side and Ukrainians were on the other. That means that uh, there was outgoing and incoming artillery day and night. And then within four days after we left that location, a train station got bombed. Artillery hit just down the street from the place we were staying at, shattered the windows on the building we were staying in, apparently. And a uh, shopping center that we had been to got hit as well. Isn't that interesting? I don't know for certain that they were targeting us. They were a little bit late on that one. Unfortunately, a lot of people died at that train station on that one. A lot of people are still struggling over there. A lot of people are struggling here. It's nice to be back in the US. It's nice to be able to speak the same language. It's nice to not have to mentally configure what the currency exchange rate is. It's nice to know what prices are. It's nice to be able to pump my own gas. Things we take for granted. Purpose, guys, can drive you to do a lot if it's with the right motivations. So. I would like to encourage you, be purpose-driven. Do what you love to do. I love training people. I love it. When I'm not doing it, I'm looking to the next time I get to. I don't know what that'll look like in the near future for me. I have suspicions, but no guarantees. I'll update you guys when I can. Till then, have a great evening. Be careful out there. Live with purpose, guys. And go save one more.